Boucher, and welcome. My name is Don Beaton. Thank you for joining us here at the Center for Cape Breton Studies at Cape Breton University. Maxime Cormier is from the Acadian village of Shedekamp. His guitar playing provides a musical experience that is truly peaceful and yet extremely complex. Maxime's original works are largely comprised of acoustic guitar that highlights a contemporary, modern approach to otherwise classic sounds. The word versatility best defines his talent, as at a young age he masterfully performed styles as diverse as jazz, blues, folk, classical and traditional Celtic music. Jouvet Cormier has been writing music since a young age and in his teens began playing bass and rhythm guitar for many bands. He has played with J.P. Cormier and popular Cape Breton band Breaking Tradition and recorded a CD with Cyril McVie. His music has been recorded by J.P. Cormier, he runs with group 1755 and is part of local radio station fundraisers. Still actively writing, Jouvet also plans to finish many partial works that have been kicking around for a while. Proving that music and traditions thrive in families, our guests today are father and son, Gervais and Maxime Cormier. So stay tuned for some great tunes, conversation, and more as we celebrate Cape Breton Island's living Celtic culture. And welcome. My name is Don Beaton, and we're here with the great father-son duo of Maxime and Gervais Cormier. Hi, fellas. How Hi. are you? Good afternoon. Good. We're doing good. pretty good. Good. Thanks for coming all the way from your hometown, which is Shetty Camp, Shetty about Camp. two hours away. And thanks for having us. Oh, listen, we're excited to have you here and chat about all your <laughs> big experiences the last little while. Um, I wanted to chat about what's coming up uh, immediately, which is you've got a second recording out. And what's the name of that? Uh, it's just uh, Maxim Cormier 2, mm-hmm. just the number two. So if it's in French, it can be du, or if it's in Spanish, it can be dos, or whatever <laughs> it may be. Right on. Know, it'll work. <laughs> Good. Yeah. And, and what's been the inspiration for that album? What's this album all about? Um, it's mostly when, when I released my first one about two years ago, there was a whole bunch of other material that was part of our live show that wasn't necessarily on the album. Mm-hmm. And just right from the get-go after releasing it, we started talking about what the next one was going to be, and mm-hmm. then it came time to go do it. <laughs> right on. And, uh, and I wanted to chat too about, uh, I guess for people to know what's going on, what's the best place? You've got a, a website <coughs> for all of that good stuff. Yeah, I'd say that my website is uh, definitely the place for any info that anyone's looking for regarding the shows or the albums, where to get them and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, you, people can listen to all of my music on my website. They can watch all the videos and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, I have pictures there. <laughs> you're, you're featured on the website prominently, I'm sure. <laughs> and uh, and on my Facebook page too. There's all kinds of stuff yeah. happening on my Facebook page. Right too. on. Well, what I love about your website, and I wanted to chat with you about this too, is um, you've done a real social media push. You've really embraced what the online world can afford you, and you've done a remarkable number of videos. Tell mm-hmm. me about kind of all of that and what that's entailed. Well, the videos, I mean, it's just, I was, I released my first album and then I put it on iTunes and all that and it, it went, everything went fine. There was, I, there's nothing that went wrong or anything, but I just felt like I, it didn't do as much as I would have wanted it to. And I just figured putting out videos would be a second round of getting mm. people's attention and all that. And mm-hmm. those got like received really well I, to the point that I planned three videos with the second album, like while we were making the album. So there's it a- It was being taped as- Yeah. shot it in studio. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. So there's, um, there's five videos from the first album and three from the second one. And I also have a live video up there with uh, a cellist and percussionist from Halifax that I play with wow. quite a bit. Yeah. You just don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> and now, are you, you're on some of these videos as on well? On some, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes. So, you know, tell me a bit about about your performing together. I, I look back and I checked, you you first performed at Celtic Colors in 2010 and have been consistently there ever since mm-hmm. and, uh, mm-hmm. and and performed together. So what's, yeah. what's that been like to, uh, especially to have 
this fella as your son and, <laughs> and playing with him on stage? First time speechless in years. <laughs> uh, it, it's been it's been interesting. It's been a, it's been really tough. Uh, it's been tough finding the right place for me to be at in there. Okay. You know, like you live you live father and son for so many years, and then you're into a project that um, you have to be as equal partners, or else you know mm -hmm. this ain't gonna work. Mm -hmm. That was quite the experience. That. I came, this was what I was dwelling on the week before that first album, before that driver sponsored CD. Yes. You know, like, we're going in here, and Max doesn't seem to be prepared because he doesn't take notes on nothing. And I was thinking, geez, he's not prepared. And the time is money, but it's not my play. I can't be a daddy on this one no more. We've just not got to work, you know? Right. So we walked in there the very first morning. It took about two hours to notice that he was more prepared than you could ever imagine you know like doesn't necessarily prepare the way i do but very very well prepared and and it worked very very fine because you did there wasn't a daddy nag nagging through the whole project yeah you know like it's today you people are much more uh, cover the whole the whole situation with internet and everything you can go and find out the answers to everything That's when true. i was young you'd get a little bit of information and run with it mm -hmm. and learn the hard way later on you know like the things that you know would have been pertinent to know Time. but you can today we can go on the internet and within hours i have a pretty good idea what's you know mm. yeah so yeah mean. it's been a learning experience for me and uh i guess that's when uh that's when the 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 the, the adult and kid that finished right there. This is the game over. Really? Overnight, you know, like, yeah, it, yeah, I had no choice, you know, like, it's... Uh, but it wasn't that big of a change. We were always pretty yeah, good friends anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it's just that uh, that uh, we were without having dwelled on where, what was going on. and, and yeah. But the week before, I was worrying about time is money. Yeah, oh, yeah, If yeah. you're not prepared, yeah. you know, and yeah, like, it was... Because you know. you've been playing for a long time as well. You've been well, yeah. this fella came yeah, out yeah, the yeah. same well, year forever. Yeah, on yeah. yes, but on projects that were there, no no hint of seriousness involved. Okay. We grew up just a bunch of friends playing music, and then ended up doing work in in the industry. But just as a bunch of friends that picked it up without really worrying about it. Yeah. This was different. Yeah. I wasn't doing this for me and for just for, to go get a paycheck at the end of the night. This is my son that's trying to develop a career. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, so I, I, I play much better today than I did even four or five years ago because mm -hmm. I, I've had to instill a little bit of seriousness into yeah. the, the well, mix, you, you know, guys, like it's, it's, it's helped, yeah. You interact really <laughs> as you would, father and son, lovely on stage, and it's been, it's been great. So what, what has it been like, has he, in terms of mentors, I guess, he's probably been the primary mentor in your life, musically, <clears throat> beyond. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. Um, it's just, even when writing music and stuff, like if I'm, I, I often, it'll often just start with a tiny little cell that I keep repeating to myself, and Sometimes he'll, I'll just hear him from the next room over saying, "Oh, I really like that," or and then even just, just something as small as that will make that little thing stick for longer, and then eventually it'll, it'll turn might turn into something bigger. And yeah, so even just all the little things, yeah, it makes a big difference. Yeah, I find uh, I'll be there learning a tune, and Dad'll be like, "Oh, I like that tune." Yeah, so yeah, yeah. when you're going through tunes, so it's it's a passively nice... in being influenced yeah. by somebody. <laughs> yeah, it's an important influence. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you, you hinted at it before, but you, your first, we're talking about your second CD, but your first CD was the recipient of the uh, Celtic Colors uh, Drivers mm -hmm. Festival Society uh, bursary. Yeah. Big Sampy Award. Yeah. What was that like? Oh, it was amazing. I mean, <laughs> it was, it, yeah, first time speechless in a long time. <laughs> um, I don't know, it, it was really, a, it, it was a really amazing opportunity to, um, because, I, I mean, I guess, I suppose I was musically ready to do it, but if it wasn't for them, it would have taken a year or two, maybe three yeah. years before I could have gotten to do it. And by then, yeah. would have probably had new material, and, yeah. like, my yeah. new album, if I had gone that route, would have probably been completely different. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because um, you were quite young, too. Like. Yeah, well, I was... A couple years 21. Ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, he had the material, and, you know, I'd, I'd worked the material enough that... It was time, yeah, and and everything came, yeah, everything fell into place at the right time. Oh, that's great. So yeah, it's uh, as a university student at the time, I never could have 
justified putting that amount of money no. towards making an album had it had to come out of my own pocket. Yes. So, and um, a big part of the reason why I was able to do the second one was from the sales of the first one and all of that. So, Set yeah. you right up. Yeah. So yeah, That's if it good. wasn't for them, I don't. It would. I don't know what things would look like right now. And let's have a, a number with you both right now. Would you be up for a tune? Yeah, sure. Great. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you. 
To learn more about their music, visit MaximeCormier.com. We'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsors who have been so gracious in supporting this initiative. Imagine studying music on a beautiful island known for its deep roots in music and culture. Cape Breton University offers a music program like no other in Canada. With an emphasis on traditional and popular music, CBU's music major provides an exciting alternative to conservatory-style classical or jazz music programs. Their course offerings are unique. The music theory courses are aimed at the needs of contemporary musicians and help you understand the music you play. In the applied music courses, you get to study with teachers who have worked with names like the Bear McNeils, Ashley McIsaac, and Natalie McMaster. Through work placements, you will gain experience in the music field tailored to your interests, whether it's studio experience, promotion, tourism, or artist management. Through the optional business minor, you can add smart, real-world management skills to the creative talent you develop. The ethnomusicology focus lets you explore local traditions, popular song, as well as music and dance from cultures all over the world. Their issues-based courses will immerse you in the debates that shape music today. Cape Breton Island has magical effects. Your ears will delight. Your legs will walk through time. Your eyes will fill with wonder. Your arms will embrace. Your heart will never leave. That sounded great. Tell me about uh, some of the tunes you just played there. Thanks. Well, um, the first thing we did, uh, we played a group of reels together. Um, the first one is, is just an old traditional reel, I think. It's uh, called Taste of Gaelic. Mm -hmm. um, into an Andy de Jarlis reel called Caribou Reel. And then Ships Are Sailing. You're good so, at the names. Good at the names. <laughs> um, I've just had to force myself to get better at it. Because so many times I've seen myself on stage mm -hmm. singing... And here's a group of reels, and uh, we don't really know what the name of these ones are, so it's yeah. happened too many times. We'll so call these two. <laughs> um, yeah. And then um, the slow air I did after that is, I only learned how to pronounce it this summer in Scotland, actually. Oh, yeah? Um, Maids of Attaker. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I heard um, Dave McCoe's recording of that maybe about a week or two after he passed away, which was right when I was at Lakewind. Yeah. We walked into Lake One just a few days after. Four or five days after the accident. Yeah. And wow. Fred and Sheppy were playing it in the studio through the monitors and all that. Mm -hmm. It just wow. haunted me for the longest time. Yeah. It's such a pretty, pretty yeah. piece. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. So you just you talked a little bit there about Scotland. What uh, what did that all involve? You were gone for a good spell. Yeah, I was over in Scotland for about six and a half weeks. And there's an organization there called Face Ross, and they... Um, They've partnered up with Celtic Colours and the International Celtic Festival in Australia. Yes. But every summer they put on a Cayley Trail project that they just team up a bunch of young musicians and send them off to tour around the UK. And yeah, I was <laughs> lucky enough to be sent over from you guys at Celtic Colours to be part of this. 
And you saw quite a bit. Yeah, we were all over. We went down to England and spent a day in London and went to Cambridge Folk Fest and mm -hmm. played all over Scotland and even on the Isles. We went to Lewis and Harris and yeah. You've seen places that a lot of people over here haven't seen, really. You, yeah, you know, absolutely. Are, they might see every 20 years, but... Yeah. Really? Oh, it was really amazing. Yeah. The, the food was really good, too. <laughs> <laughs> I think I came home with... And all my clothes were a bit too small. <laughs> it's probably not going to get better at Celtic Island, either. <laughs> Ain't going to get better home. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take discipline. <laughs> so, you know, we, we hinted about your relationship and the mentorship there. What other mentors do you, do you have in your life or have had? Oh, um, Scott McMillan definitely plays a big role in my musical life. Yeah. I've, I've, I've known him for a long, long time, but I've spent the last four years at Dow studying with him. And it's really great because the, the music department at Dow is, is classical-based, so all my theory and history and all that is all classical theory. But mm -hmm. for my guitar lessons with Scott and the, entire, the whole guitar department, they're really open that I can work on my own compositions, I can play a Bach piece with a flat pick, I can work, do jazz or traditional stuff or whatever I really want. So it's it's really been amazing to to go in the direction of, that that I want to. <laughs> it would have been hard to find a music uh, program anywhere for a better fit. Really. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And thankfully that's all yeah. growing and there's a great music yeah. Pro yeah. program here now. Here, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but, you know, yeah. You're, yeah. you're all through it. But that's, that's fantastic that... Uh, he's been there, and he's been there, like you said, for so long, mm -hmm. uh, for many years. Yeah. Do you, I'm curious, do you play any other instruments? Not really. I mean, I can I can work my way around in a couple of other instruments, but not really. You no. played banjo on a recording. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, to, be, to be fair, to be yeah, fair, it was a tenor weird. banjo, and I just tuned it like the top four strings of a guitar, and yeah. took the easy way out. I just wanted it that sound It was for the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I'm a I, I do the same though. Yeah. It, it, it's it's a good little. Um, yeah. So, and yourself? Do you play? What all? What are all the instruments? I play in? bass and yeah. guitar, and harmonica. Yeah. I play mandolin like Max plays the banjo. And no, he's actually really good on mandolin. <laughs> and you're so yeah. humble. Gotta like. have fun. Eh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he plays the washboard too. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> What about compositions? I know you've had some lovely compositions, uh, especially in the last few years. Oh, thanks. Um, what about compositions? Well, <laughs> what I guess, what's been your inspiration? Is it something that you sit down and purposely plan to work out, um, or do they kind of inspirationally come to you? Very rarely will it just come out of telling myself I have to write something yeah. now. Yeah. But um, So usually, if, for example, if I were to write a reel or something, sometimes the first bar will come up in my head and then I'll just tell myself, okay, now I have to sit down and finish this tune. Yeah. So there is that element of getting to work and mm -hmm. actually doing it, but... Yeah. It usually starts by being a little bit of something very, very good. Yeah. yeah. That you have to build on it and finish it rather than throw it away or neglect yeah. it, you know. And, and even all my other compositions that aren't necessarily categorizable <laughs> they're um they all started like that like a, a little five second loop that i yeah, keep repeating really, until yeah, i know yeah, where yeah, i want to go yeah, with it yeah, mm -hmm. okay yeah. stuff like that so yeah. some can go really fast and work themselves out quickly or some take some time yeah a lot of them do take quite a bit of time because yeah. if i'm working on a new piece that i'm writing i'll just i might play around with it for a half hour and add one more bar to it or something you know mm -hmm. it might take a long time and i guess sometimes they do come fairly quickly but yeah yeah have you have you made tunes together yeah, we've worked on. We've few worked, of them. yeah, and we've also uh, we've also together corrected some things that yeah some of us had worked on before. Okay. And the stuff we've we've written together, it's usually one of us will come with a fairly concrete idea, and then we'll just work it out yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't sit down to work together. It's just a except for when we have to learn and put music together, and then we'll kind of throw around suggestions and ideas. And I'm mm -hmm. I'm sure you're the same. We. We don't necessarily sit down to work at this, but music is always rolling in there. Yeah. Always. Oh. Constantly, constantly, when doing dishes, when doing whatever. Yeah. So a little five-second loop is something very special, you know, like it can... And I, I... The special things that my brain comes up with, I like them enough that I'll be, I'll be playing them a hundred times throughout every day for months and months and months just to try to fit it with something else. And, you know, mm -hmm. it... 
so fussy. We care about it enough yeah. that you don't say this project is finished right. till it's right. You yeah. know, sometimes it can take mm. forever. We've got all kinds of things that are just about done. And they might never be done. But you know, like it's and like even there's to be right. Yeah. E- even like my solo guitar pieces on the first CD, if if they hadn't been recorded and documented, I don't know if I'd even consider them to be finished even today. Really? Mm. But like now, now that they're recorded and they're yeah. there that way, I, I play them That's that right. way all the time. But there comes a time you may not be able to make it better. But if you don't call it quits, you're going to be changing it all the Forever. time a little yeah. bit. So it was good to get it recorded. Yeah. 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 Well, before we end, I thought I would ask uh, one last question, which would be, what's it been like or what has it meant to be included in in Celtic Colors and be on, on stage? What does it mean to you both? Oh, well, for us both, uh, well, I'll let Dad comment on that afterwards, but Celtic Color, without Celtic Colors, um, my musical life would definitely look a lot different because yeah. it was one of the first, like, um, good gig opportunities that I got from home and being invited year after year to come back and it's something to get excited about every year to practice for when I was younger and all that and then to get the driver's award that's part of Celtic Colors make a a first album which the sales of that funded the second album and then Celtic Colors sends me to Australia and, and Scotland and yeah, yeah we've had lots of help with the province, I should say too. To, it wasn't uh, it was through the provincial program that made that possible. But yeah, it's, well, big, but it's been yeah. yeah. A big thank you to the province. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great. So it's it's had some very major impacts. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and yourself, Shirvey. Uh, I don't know how to answer that one. It's a it's a it's a community that we're welcome into. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm beyond i mean i could think i could dwell on this for for days and just keep rattling on but it, basically that's what it is you know? yeah and it's nice yeah that's great yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. well like i said you both fit the theme perfectly this year and every year and mm-hmm. it's been lovely to have mm-hmm. you here and get to know you better good for myself as well and <laughs> thank you thank we you will much. see you at festival club <laughs> i'm gonna hold you to it <laughs> Yeah, we thanks. will. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah, yeah. then I'll, I'll keep him there fairly late the night of our gig. Okay. There you we'll, go. We'll stay there till at least what? You'll chaperone him. Till at least one or two. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be sponsored by Red Bull this year yeah. at Celtic Colors Festival. <laughs> Caffeine of some sort, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you both so much, and yeah. it's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you very much. much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and thanks for joining us. We leave you now with the vignette of culture bear Dave McIsaac. Dave shows us his versatility as an instrumentalist playing mandolin and also shares some of his musical influences. Fast on March, one, two.
96. Played till I was about nine, saw the Beatles on TV, fired the fiddle away, took the guitar up, took the fiddle back up when I was about 15. Angus Chisholm was around the city at the time for a bit. And he and my father were old friends and he kicked me in the butt to get back at the fiddle, so. So it's all Angus Chisholm's fault, huh? <laughs> so he was, was he a big influence on you, Angus? Oh, absolutely. Well, all the old 78s, we used to have them all at home. And Angus Chisholm, Angus Allen Gillis, Dan J. Campbell, Winston Scotty Fitzgerald, uh, all those great players. Plus all the LPs, five McDonald fiddlers. Uh, I always wish Buddy McMaster had, had made an LP when I was a kid because I'd be hearing everybody talk about the great dance Buddy played the night before, but I didn't have anything at home to play of him. And being a kid, you couldn't get into the dances, so I'd be very PO'd that I couldn't go hear Buddy play at the dances. I couldn't understand. I figured I'm not going to drink any of that crazy juice that the big people are drinking. I just want to hear the music, so. So would you have gotten down to Cape Breton frequently when you were growing up or not? Was... In the summer times, yeah. Uh, a lot of my cousin's weddings, in fact, I remember hearing Buddy play a lot uh, at, at weddings, you know, when I was a kid and got to, uh, it was really great to hear Buddy play a whole bunch of music. The hair would just be standing on my head, it'd just be amazing. Some of the finest music you're going to hear on this planet, really. How long do you, do you think it took you to, to master the fiddle? Uh, it'd take me another three lifetimes, I'd never scratch the surface. Really? That's how. But I remember Scotty Fitzgerald used to say to me, you know, I'd be praising him up and he'd say, listen, boy, it's only a little wooden box with a bunch of wires on it. And I'd say, easy for you to say, because, but he used to, he practiced a lot. He used to say, uh, good fiddler practice one hour a day and great fiddler practice three hours a day. So you could take one fiddle and one piece of music and give the same fiddle and the same piece of music to six different violin players, and it's going to sound six different ways of one tune kind of thing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like Scotty used to say, the tune and the written out is only the skeleton of the tune, then you've got to put the meat on it yourself, and with your embellishments and grace notes and your expression, phrasing, like Dan Arrett McDonald used to say about a fiddler playing too fast, he said, it's like a car, when you're driving a car, if you drive too fast, you're gonna miss the scenery. And like, if you're playing too fast, you're gonna get, not gonna get your grace notes or your trills or your dynamics of soft notes as opposed to loud notes. And it's all gonna be glossed over. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you gotta be real careful with the timing that you can, get all, they can get all this stuff in, but still have a good groove. Like I took some lessons to learn how to read and the, uh, this guy, he was a great concert violinist, but he used to give me heck for tapping my feet. And I'd say, well, where I come from, we tap our feet, you know? <laughs> 